Hello, welcome. Today I'm going to be talking to you about jellyfish, not in general, but one particular species of jellyfish. I was reading this book. I have this encyclopedia set from 1934. It's a scientific encyclo encyclopedia. This section I was reading about was crustaceans, which are not jellyfish, but I was reading about crustaceans, my favorite thing to eat. And um, I actually didn't know that shrimp were crusta crustaceans. You know, when I think of the term shellfish, that's all I think about is that they're fish with shells. Like shells, you have to peel, you have to open them, like that. But I didn't realize shrimp are a, a type of crustacean and so are many other things. Jellyfish not being one of those things. The reason that that led me to jellyfish is because I was like, oh, crustaceans, you know what? It would be so cool to see a bioluminescent crustacean. So in California, especially in Southern California, every now and then we, we get these bioluminescent waves. I think they're plankton though they may be algae but i think they're plankton and i didn't realize like there's lots of different types of like plankton type creatures that are also crustaceans that jellyfish eat we'll get to that but there's a lot of bioluminescent type of like little shelled creatures like that which i thought was pretty cool because i i literally only think about crabs when i think about crustaceans but while i was searching for bioluminescent creatures i came upon the amazing the beautiful the magical helmet jellyfish now these live in the deep sea and they are like, they glow like bright red, which I don't have really any pictures to show you like that today because um, I'm trying to avoid copyright. All these pictures I'm showing you are either in the public domain or, you know, in the creative commons. So there are links below. But if you want to type in helmet jellyfish, you'll see them. Um, they are beautiful, I think. Very odd looking creatures. Here we have an awesome diagram from different angles. So you can see kind of like... So we have like the the red the part that's like red and then like the gelatinous thing that goes over like this is like the helmet part right these these parts i'm pretty sure these are the mouths or whatever like the underneath of the jellyfish when I mean, you know if you go under its like little skirt this is it and then obviously its tentacles like that so what's really cool is the the helmet jellyfish oh by the way i want to mention that this is this talks a lot video in particular is the first one that i've ever taken time to research now to be clear and i might have to set this record multiple times i i research in a very specific way i'm an intuitive learner so i either already know something or i let my mind guide me to what i think is the most valuable thing for me to remember although i think i did pretty well in school i have to force myself to remember certain things and i feel like i retain the best when i actually care I think that goes for a lot of people, but some people are just going to remember everything. I feel like whatever my brain actually wants to stick, that's it for me. That's what I'm, that is what I'm specifically supposed to know about that particular topic. If you'd like to use anything I'm saying for like a paper you want to write or a book, like did you, you want to put together anything like that, any, um, if you want to just use me as a source for whatever reason. Um, I am putting my research notes on Patreon. I made a new tier just for those who enjoy these type of videos. It's $3 and I'll have how I wrote my notes down. I'll have all my notes, any sources I use, all the pictures I use, plus ones uh, that I thought were interesting that I just wanted to have for later just to look at for myself. I'll also include any links to pictures that I couldn't just show here. They're all on the internet, you can just Google them, but just so it's more like if you were curious about what I thought was cool that I wish I could have showed you. That'd be like a little added incentive for anyone who uh, wants to support me on Patreon. I just want to, for the record, um, I will put some kind of viewer discretion warnings. Some things people might think are gross. I have a different tolerance for, to, for certain things. Like in this, this for, for example, this, this particular species, helmet jellyfish, there's a lot of pictures of it like being washed up on shore, fishermen catching them. I like like those kind of photos. <laughs> like I think it's interesting. I've always had a, had, a, had a fascination with like taxidermy, wet specimens, stuff like that. So it doesn't shock me. I think it's fascinating. I love, I love biology in the sense of the, the construction of living and dead things. So stuff, so stuff like that will be in notes about stuff like this. It's basically whatever I found while I was doing my research that I couldn't share here or didn't have time to, et cetera, et cetera. That'll be, that'll be all linked below. I hope I explained that clearly enough. So the, the helmet jellyfish was discovered. I use that loosely because I don't know how people actually really discover something for the first time. I think that's amazing. The first, it was first documented, let's say, by Francois Perron and Charles Lisieux. They're French. Okay, so sorry if I butchered their names. So 
Francois here. He was born August 22nd, long time ago. He is a Leo Virgo cusp. And it said that the helmet jellyfish was just one of a hundred thousand like zoological specimens that he helped document, which I'm thinking like, that's pretty impressive, a hundred thousand. I don't know when the telescope or the microscope was invented because if it's a hundred thousand, it's gotta be, it's gotta it can, can include microorganisms or something. You might be like, Marissa, why don't you just Google when was a microscope invented? I'll do it then, okay? Okay, so I'm super like uh, skeptical about absolutely everything when it comes to dates and times and things because I have a, just a more spiritual view on that. We're not even gonna get, we're not even, I'm not even gonna touch that right now. But it says that the microscope was first really thought of to be around in like 1600. So they absolutely probably had microscopes on their voyage and good ones too for, you know, 200 years later. So maybe some of those specimens were like microorganisms. The most interesting thing I learned about him, well, the second most interesting thing, this, this, the first one is actually really sad. But the, the second thing is that he coined the term anthropology, it said, which I thought that was cool. Uh, because I'm just looking at this random jellyfish and I meet the guy, I meet him, I met him, the guy who, you know, coined the term anthropology. Sadly, this is the, the actual most interesting thing that I found about him. Um, he passed away when he was 35 from tuberculosis. 35 is so young. I'm 32. I can't even imagine. I mean, I guess I could imagine, but it's sad. I also want to add that Francois has a national park or something like that named after him in Australia because where they did all these discoveries wasn't in Australia, like the waters around Australia and stuff like that, which I thought was interesting. So these guys are both naturalists, which man, what a dream to be a naturalist, to be able to go around and document different animals and draw them and i'm telling you naturalists back in the day and probably still now but it's different because we have photography and we have really great cram cameras we have great cameras now but like they drew everything and these are artists on artists i watched a movie recently called where the crawdad sings i really vibed with the main character let me just say aesthetically in a lot of different ways and she's a naturalist she you know draws all the shells and stuff in like the bayous or wherever she lives at in the marshes oh man I love that. And she has like a bunch of different, like, just like my house is kind of like that. I'm not going to lie to you. I have a bunch of different like creatures that are dead, little shells and corals and things like that. I don't have the time to draw and sketch animals, but I'd love to. And my eyesight's pretty bad. So I don't know if I'd really do a great job at that. But if you're watching this video and I was successful, you can see my thumbnail is my, um, I tried to pixel. I'm getting into pixel art. I tried to draw a pixel version of the helmet jellyfish. But if you see my thumbnail, that means I completed it. And if you want to see more of my pixel art, it's actually on my Saru page. I'm trying to learn as I go. I tend to learn everything by myself, so it can be rough, but I enjoy it. Who am I talking about? Um, anyways, so all that to say that Charles over here, born January 1st, it's a Capricorn. We love to see it. I'm a Capricorn. He is a fantastic artist. Let me show you some of his stuff. So I hope this picture is clear for y'all. My glasses are not on. It looks great to me. Hope it's not blurry. Um, this is not a helmet jellyfish. I couldn't find one that he did of the helmet jelly jellyfish in particular, but it's a jellyfish. And look at it. Look at the tendrils and the details. Wonderful. Here's another jellyfish. It might be the same species, but I don't know. But you can look at all the details. You know, this is like pencil. I didn't do a lot of research on Charles, or, or at least I didn't find anything that my brain particularly thought was worth mentioning. Sorry to Charles. Rest in peace, wherever you are. But... He did die when he was 67, and just suddenly it says, so I don't know, that that could mean anything. So here's a picture of the, the uh, helmet jellyfish descending. I don't know what it's doing, but its tentacles are over its head. It's probably got caught in motion. I want to say that this creature, um, the scientific name for this creature is per Paraphyla Paraphyla. Hope I'm saying that right. And that was the most interesting thing for me to research, because I'm really into etymology. I really like to find connections in language because I, I really like just connecting us all together. And I could, it was so hard to find where this word came from because it was coined by Francois and Charles. And it took me a while to find out where this word came from because this is like the first use of it, I feel. I couldn't find a, a word like directly like paraphyla. It just came, takes me back to this specific creature. So I did some math and I dissected the word peri and phyla. And I just went from there. So peri is from the Greek 
and it means like roundabout and closing and you can see this creature it's got that that like gelatinous layer over like the red part of it so i thought that was cool and rounded and closing also can be used to describe helmets because they're round and they're in closing <laughs> Another similar word I found was perianth, which is like a French word, and it's the outer part of a flower. So like, I'm thinking the petals. I am not a biologist yet. Um, you can see from this picture, like, it's like the outer part of the, fl the flower, like the petals is what I'm looking at. That's how I'm seeing it. So I'm thinking another reference to like a covering type of thing. I mean, peri, perianth, you know. So... So the second word is the phy phyla, and the only thing I could really find is that it could be from another Greek word is phulon. Sorry if I'm killing that pronunciation, but it's like, it means leaf in Greek. So whenever it's used in science, supposedly it means like leaf-like parts of the animal or whatever they're studying. I can't super make a connection there, but I did find out that this word is also from phyllo, which is a type of flower they use in the Mediterranean. Um, to make things like baklava. Before we continue, I'd like to play a game. Which one of these is the helmet jellyfish? Five, four, three, two, one. It's this little one that I'm hiding behind. You see? This is like some kind of like x-ray kind of scanned. These are all probably dead. These look like dead jellyfish specimens. But you can see the helmet. Um, this would be like the red part. I'm not sure what uh, these other type of specimens are at this time, but it's really cool to see old photos of these creatures. So the helmet jellyfish is found in all the oceans and it's actually become um, kind of a problem in some places where it's just there's too many of them. So these, uh, so the red helmet jellyfish can grow up to be around a foot long and they can weigh a little bit over a pound. I could not find if you could eat these in particular. I have eaten jellyfish like once. Uh, had a jellyfish salad. I don't know what kind of jellyfish it was, but it had the same texture as seaweed salad. If you've ever had that at any sushi restaurant, it's like that bright green salad. It's really good. But either, even if you wanted to eat these, these are made up of like 90% water. So it's probably not like, I love water, but this is not like a meal, you know, like a hearty meal or anything like that. So like I said, these are found deep, deep in the sea, like 2,700 meters down. And they like it there because the sunlight actually hurts them. And they prefer to live in like cloudy, murky waters. Not just like, oh, it's, it's got to be deep. It's also got to be like dirty, not dirty. It's got to be like cloudy, hard to see through water. So how much jellyfish that eat these things called coat pods. They eat a number of different plankton type creatures. These are one of them. These are the coat pods. Am I saying that right? And these are other crustaceans, you know. They look like very beautiful roaches. Can't say I probably actually I've eaten uh, mealworms and I've eaten crickets like dusted in flavorings. I would probably eat these. These don't look like super terrible. If they look like this, like this is their true form, like this bioluminescent, they look very beautiful, very very beautiful to eat. Like the helmet jellyfish, these they these these are found in all like all kinds of water. But these ones, the the coat pods are found in like fresh water and salt water. And like I said, they're classified as plankton. They're one of the the main diets of the helmet jellyfish. They eat other types of like small creatures. They also eat these little creatures. These are like known as sea angels, but they're like, they're slugs. They're like a, a sea slugs like this. Normally, I am terrified of uh, slugs and uh, snails of all sorts. I don't like to see them. I think they're disgusting. For whatever reason, the sea variety does not freak me out as much or at all as the ones that are found on land. Sorry for my bias. It might just be because I never really see their faces, like their little n nasty little faces. So, but yeah, here's another different type of like sea creature, snail type thing that the helmet jellyfish would eat. The helmet jellyfish does eat a lot of different creatures and in turn, other creatures will eat the helmet jellyfish's poop. So it's a very beautiful circle of life that they have going on, very symbiotic. While I was researching the helmet jellyfish, I came upon this thing called pink jelly, pink helmet jellyfish. And it's this creature. Here's a, an old-timey sketch. These are also beautiful. They glow very beautiful, uh, bright bioluminescence that I could not find any public domain pictures of. But I urge you to go and look. They are actually not related like that. Like, they're in the same phylum, which is a way to classify animals that I don't quite understand. But they're not from the same class. So it's like, I don't really actually know how closely related they are. But they're different enough that they probably can't like breed with each other that we know of. I think that's how 
species categorizations work is if they can actually procreate. I don't know. But yeah, you see, this is the pink, uh, pink helma jellyfish, the Agalantha, what's it called? Agalantha digitalis. You can actually see it. It's eating like a little, probably a coat pod. It's got a little creature in there. These differ in a multitude of ways from the helmet jellyfish and that they're so tiny. These are like two inches, like max. And remember the helmet jellyfish is like a, like a foot. I read somewhere that these are the most common species of jellyfish that are found near the surface, which is really interesting because I've never heard of this. Probably because I never took the time to ever research anything. It's just because I've, whenever I see jellyfish washed on, sh on shore, if I'm at, if ever, when I was at the aquarium when I was younger, it's like moon jellies. Those are the ones you see in, in abundance. Well, that's all I have for you today on this wonderful, interesting creature, the helmet jellyfish. Um, I don't really like talking about like how things reproduce because I think it's kind of gross, even though I know it's not. It's science. I don't want to talk about it. I've never enjoyed those segments of nature documentaries ever. I really just rather not know. I feel like there's a certain um, power in knowledge and I don't want to have that. I don't want to have that. I've also read that you don't want to have too much knowledge. And this is, this is where I draw the line for myself personally. I also have tropophobia. So anything that concerns any kind of cluster of anything, if it, I can't handle it mentally. I'm a very visual person. I can imagine almost anything. And I'd rather just not. I hope this was interesting for you to listen about and that you found it somewhat informative. And hopefully, and hopefully maybe you learned one new thing today. I intend for these videos to be of varying lengths, depending on how interested I am in the topic meaning how many things I found about that specific thing interesting. It's random, as we have our, as I hope we are all slowly learning. But I hope what I thought was interesting about the helmet jellyfish was interesting for you. And if you like this sort of kind of video, if you like hearing me talk about different life forms here on this planet, maybe other planets, feel free to like this video. If you like hearing somebody talk about literally anything, feel free to subscribe. If you like talking and video games, I have a gaming channel. It's Saru. It's linked below. I play lots of different games. Right now I'm doing the entire Final Fantasy series starting from number one, minus the MMOs, and I also play a bunch of other um, RPG games and point and click games. I'm a very eclectic person, a person with a lot of varied interests. So feel free to check that out. Thank you so much for watching this video and most importantly to me, thank you for listening. Goodbye.